G'day YouTubers and welcome to another video on one of the many projects that I thought I was going to be able to do during the snapper closure. I'm far enough into the job now to realise that I haven't got a hope in hell of finishing it before the snapper season opens again. I'll probably be about a month behind that. But never mind, it's all going to be good stuff. In this episode I'm fitting another transducer to my boat. It's a through hole transducer this time and this project is going to be a lot of interest to anyone who has a flat plank or a convex keel on their boat and they want to fit a transducer to it. I haven't tested it at the point where I'm recording this but I am really confident. I've spoken to a few people, I've looked at some pictures of what they've been doing in America. I'm really confident that this is going to work. So you might want to wait till the last video in this particular project when I test it on water before you go jumping in to do the same thing, but I am confident. The through hole transducer I got comes with a fairing block, but unfortunately that fairing block won't fit my boat. The space between the hole I have to cut out where the transducer itself comes through and the anti-rotation bolt at the front of it isn't enough to fit in the structure of my boat where I need to put it. It's just too close together. Anywhere I can put the transducer through the hull means that that anti-rotation bolt is going to come up through a cross member, which is about five or six inches deep, is probably foam filled, and I'm not sure how thick the glass is. So I don't want to put any strain on it. I don't want to drill through the foam because that means I've got to seal it. All sorts of considerations there. So I decided I'd make my own fairing. And so the first part of this project is about making that. If you don't know anything about fiberglass, it is the fiberglass strands that carry all the load. The resin is only there to transmit the load between the individual small strands. Any excess resin you have is just extra weight with no extra strength. There's practically no strength in the resin itself. It's all in the fiberglass, or 95% of the strength is in the fiberglass. The resin is just a matrix that's there to carry the load to the individual strands of glass. So having said that, the obvious thing is that you don't want any more resin in a layup than you have to have to wet the glass out. And since I don't have an autoclave or any sort of pressure forming mould, what I did to make what will become the top surface of the fairing is to lay it up on some perspex, which I coated with release agent, and then stack some really heavy metal bars on top of it to squeeze out any excess resin. I used about uh, 10 or 14 layers of 8 ounce satin weave S glass, which is way overkill for the job, but it was what I had on hand and didn't cost me anything. No, well, this is going to be the sacrificial end then. Ooh. Okay, well not enough release agent on that obviously. Yeah, a little bit of damage from the releasing it. But by and large I'll get a I'll get enough out of there to do the job. Just that bit there should do it. Uh, that's why I laid up a bit extra anyway, in case she suffered a bit of damage. So that'll do nicely. I marked out the shape of the fairing and I rough cut it just a little bit outside the line. I touched the line just there and there, but that's okay as long as I don't go in any further. Other than that, it's rough cut a little bit away from the line. I'll put that on the uh, table belt sander and just bring that right down to the line and then that part of it's finished ready to glue on some foam to make the core of it. The next phase is to glue these layers together. I've had to use three layers to get enough thickness in it. This is a bit of Klegel cell and it's a more open open cell structure. Uh, I don't know how to put it. The pores of the cell are more open than the uh, other foam that I have which I think might be Divini cell. Not 100% sure on that. 
In any case, this one soaks up a lot more resin to fill up the uh, cell structure so that we get a good bond. Put that aside for a minute. We'll coat this side of it. If I had any um, glass bubbles, they're really microscopic glass bubbles, I'd mix some of that in it because it's a good filler and it helps fill the gaps. But I don't have any. You can also use talcum powder, but that's a bit heavier. I prefer the glass bubbles when I pack them. We'll put those here as well to fill up the open pores in the foam. As soon as I've got some left that's not going to be of any use to anything, I'll just pour it on here and let it squeeze out. See if I can mop this extra bits up. So I don't have too much to clean up afterwards. So it's lined up all right. A little bit of plastic over top of it to protect it. And something heavy to sit on it, just to weigh it all together while oh, it glues. Leave that set overnight, and or 24 hours. Now I come back, take that off, finish shaping it, drill the hole through the centre and prep it for putting the side walls on it. We'll go through doing all that tomorrow. I didn't have any foam the right thickness for doing the job, so I had to glue two pieces of foam together. And I cut the foam larger than I needed for the fairing so that I could sand it all back to the actual size of the fiberglass, which was cut perfectly for the fairing I needed. I've got it all glued on. The next job is going to be to grind it off back down to the profile I want. That's it for that grind. Got the whole thing shaped. In a couple of days, I'm not sure if I mentioned it earlier in the video. I know I showed you cutting this wedge out, and I said I was going to bog it up, and if I had some glass bubbles, I would use them and make up a bog to do it, but I didn't have any. So what I did have was some Plasti Bond. It's a Sally's brand. That's a uh, polyester bog. So I just used that. Once it's dry, I'll sand it back and the outside layers of fiberglass will stick to that. And you can see I've more than doubled the amount of surface area that the fiberglass on the side's got to stick to. Forgot to turn the camera on for the start, but wet the foam first so that the fiberglass has got something to stick to. And then Lay the fiberglass down and start wetting it out and just repeat, repeat, repeat until you've used it all. Let that dry a bit. Once that starts to set, I can trim him up. Right, now, see if we can trim this without doing any damage. Trim it a bit high at the moment, because she's not quite set enough to trim right down. Right, that's one side of the fairing 
locked on. And you can see now that I did rush the cutting off a little bit. And it was getting a little bit late in the afternoon. It was a bit cool and hadn't dried as well as it should have before I cut it. It's not, uh, it's not a huge issue. Uh, I can live with it. It's not going to weaken it or anything, but a little bit disappointing. I won't do that again. I'll get this done this morning so that it'll dry plenty of time. Now, the thing here is I want to cut down here on pretty much the same angle as this side comes into here. Just like that. Perfect. That way this side will bond to that. And there we go again. Pert near perfect. I might just get a file and just there will maybe quarter of a millimetre bump just there. I'll just get a file and knock that off. And other than that, that'll be ready to fiberglass glass on. Ten layers, same as the other side. And as I recall, that material is about a five ounce S glass. Um, satin weave. Overkill for this job, you needn't use something like that, but I had it left over from another project, so I'm just using it up on this. Um, it is way, way, way stronger than it needs to be for this job. Now when you're mixing this, make sure you work with a roundabout and up and down motion. You want to get the stuff at the bottom to mix right through as well, so pull it to the surface as you're stirring. Now I say to mix for 60 uh, seconds, one minute. I don't generally do that because you can see, I hope, that that's gone green instead of the bluish colour it was. Once you've got an even colour of green through, she's mixed. That's all you need to worry about. Then, give a decent coat onto the piece you're going to fiberglass onto. It's not a bad idea sometimes to seal the pores and do a hot resin on it and let it soak into the foam. But I don't think we need to on this foam. And um, once you've got the resin there, that helps this stick in place and get some resin through it Don't worry too much about having an excess of resin on the on the first layer. And it fills up any voids underneath, and the next layer will soak some of it back in anyway. But it is important to make sure you get that bond particularly particularly along that top edge where you're bonding to the and the ends where you're bonding to the other piece of fiberglass that you already put on the day before
That'll do. Now, next one. And just keep going like that. The other thing that's not a bad idea to do is just give it a bit of a roll every few layers. And I generally do it when I put a dry layer on because it helps bring out some of the excess resin out of the underlying layers. You don't want to roll it heavy because you don't want to suck all the resin out of the underlying layers. Otherwise you'll end up with a dry um, layer or dry spots that will eventually delaminate and that's the last thing you want. And you can notice the colour of this is changing, it's going more of a, an olive green now. That shows me it's starting to gel. So I need to work quickly to get this on before it goes too far. When it goes too far, you can't work with it anymore. You need to throw it out and make another batch. This is another thing you can do if you've got short bits. Don't do it on the outside layer, do it on one of the inside layer and never ever um, make two joins in the same spot. So if you're going to join another piece, put your join up in another spot. I generally don't like joining if I've got any... Uh, concerns about the uh, strength of the job. A uh, little bit used judiciously is okay, but don't go overboard and join lots of small pieces. See, it's getting a brownie tinge to this now. Means it's almost gone. Just get this on in time, mate. I may have gone away just a little bit too long here. See how we go. Hmm. I wouldn't want it to be any longer, that's for sure. Make sure you keep your body out of the way whenever you're cutting towards you. If you slip, you want the knife to go past you. Think I've done my dash on this side. I can't get all that cut off, that's for sure. grinding's about the only way it's going to come off by the looks of it. Um, I'll keep whittling away at it, see if I can get some more. Oh, the closer I can get it down, the easier it's going to be, that's for sure. Messed that up. Once it goes off, it goes off quick, so you've got to be right on the ball with it. Never mind. I can fix it. Just going to take more work than I wanted to do. Have a finger failure on the drilling of these. And 51 millimeter hole saw through there. And the correct distance ahead, an 8 millimeter drill through there. And the other thing. While the camera was off, I also drilled this down with a little hole saw. 
and I've serrated the edge of the piece of the plastic that I'm going to put in there. Just so I can work it all the way down to the bottom. So I think I pretty much have. Actually, I think what I might do is epoxy that in. Give it a good coat of uh, marine epoxy glue and put it in with that. Do it in the morning. I'll do it tomorrow rather. Just the same, but uh, that's what's going to happen. Good coat of glue and then push that all the way in. And after it's all set, I'll cut off the excess. And then I've got to dig out the hole here where the actual transducer is going to fit. And once that's done, we can cover him up on the top and finish him off with some paint. Now that's all I'm putting in this video. This video is going to be a bit of a long series of videos. Because to mount a through-hole transducer and do a do-it-yourself fairing for it, you're taking a fair risk. If you don't do it right, you could lose your bait. I'm not saying I'm perfect with it. I've had enough experience that I'm confident that I can do it correctly. But by all means, look at YouTube videos, get some advice from professionals, go and get it done professionally if you're not sure. But I'm going to take it through this video step at a time, try and give you as many tips as I can and show you everything that I did, so we'll probably end up with three or four videos in the series. It'll come out over a period of a couple of months, I guess. I'm going to mix it in with other videos, try to get out and do a bit of fishing, etc. We'll just see how it all goes. It'll get finished eventually, and until the next video, good fishing.